Hey there, I am Dr. Jerry Crete, and you're listening to Be With The Word. This is episode 78, and it's the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. So in this show, I'm going to discuss those readings um, and bring in a little psychological um, aspect, and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of it. Uh, For those of you that are following, uh, I'm still traveling, so I was in Steubenville, Ohio at Franciscan University uh, last week, and today I'm headed back home to Georgia. Had a great week and uh, really enjoyed uh, getting to meet a number of professors there. Uh, got a chance to do a Pints with Aquinas episode with uh, with Matt Frad. So if it, it was a question and answers uh, I did. So it was Ask a Catholic Therapist. So if you're interested in hearing my uh, answers on there, go ahead and listen. Um, <clears throat> the project I was working on was trying to bring uh, integration between Catholic faith and mental health practice. So we're working on a, proje- a pilot project. And I got quite an infusion of philosophy, which I really enjoyed. So, and in fact, talked to quite a few philosophy professors there, and it really got my mind kind of, kind of uh, thinking. And it actually led to my approach to this week's readings. So, this week we have the Gospel in Mark, and we have that really interesting uh, section where this woman who has hemorrhages. And uh, she's been suffering for 12 years, and she uh, touches Jesus' cloak, and Jesus notices sort of power coming from him, and she's healed instantly. And Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples are all like, well, there are people all around you. (laughs) Why would you think, um, you know, in particular, who touched you? And this woman comes forward, and she actually comes forward in fear and trembling, because she's, I guess she's worried she did something wrong, perhaps. But in fact, Jesus says, no, um, your faith healed you. So she took the action of reaching out and in faith to be healed. Uh, pretty powerful. In the same passage, we have uh, Jairus, who is a synagogue official, whose 12-year-old daughter is dying. Or, In fact, we find out she actually died. Or they thought she died and uh, he asks for Jesus to heal her and Jesus actually goes to their house and he um, he does touch her he touches her hand and says little girl I say to you arise and she's healed so I thought that was really interesting and I was thinking also about the issue of depression in our world and how that's so common so many people are struggling with depression these days and while I was away one of the professors was talking about the um, deadly sins and different lists of deadly sins throughout the ages we have different lists from different church fathers they kind of get codified eventually through um, St. Thomas Aquinas but um, some of the early lists um, list a sin called Akedia And Akedia is a little bit difficult to translate, and I think it later gets translated as sloth, but sloth doesn't really capture the whole meaning of that word. I think Akedia is more in tune with the idea of depression, that Akedia kind of has within it possibly some aspects of sloth in a sense where there's a lack of motivation and a lack of ability to do something. Right? It might have some sadness in it, but it, I'm even thinking perhaps it has a little bit of anger or a little bit of um, a few different emotions kind of mixed up, leading to just a feeling like doing an act of love is a burden, which that would bring in the sort of sin aspect to it. We don't think of depression as itself a sin, but more that because we're stuck if we're if we're experiencing depression it might prevent us from doing things that we're needing to do or that would be good to do so in that sense we're missing the mark in that sense we're not being fully what we could be so i was really interested um then in linking um this idea of akedia which i think is a word we don't usually hear 
and getting a sense for remedies uh, for Akedia in terms of virtue and what we can practice and how we can we can um, stave off depression or we hear the word battle depression all the time and uh, I'm not sure that I'm a fan of battle depression because my approach to treating depression is less of a battle and more of a surrender or a trust and a change of heart. Um, so battling isn't the image I go for typically, but I understand why people would say that. Um, so let's break it down just a little bit. We hear that uh, perhaps the idea of Akedia is a resistance to the demands of love. That's what was Professor, I'll give a shout out to Professor Brandon Dom at Franciscan who at least worded it that way to, uh, to me and uh, I thought it was interesting, especially a burden, that it is a burden. As soon as I thought of the idea that the resistance to demands of love as a burden, that immediately gets me thinking to parts and parts work and how there might be a part of us, right, that feels that burden. Like, I just can't get out of bed in the morning. I just can't get up and do the thing I'm supposed to do today. There's nothing left in me. I'm feeling so heavy, right? And that really sounds to me like depression. Depression is less sadness. Sometimes people think sad. It could have sadness for sure. It could be a loss could be built into it. But there could also be some repressed anger in there. There could be just this lack of motivation. So it got, it, how does this connect um, and connect to our readings? Well, one of the things I think is interesting is um, the idea of, the, of taking an action in faith. So either the woman with the hemorrhages or Jairus takes an action to go to Christ, like touching his cloak is an action. And that takes some courage and boldness, right? To just say, I'm going to just go for it. Because she could have been, he could have turned around and said, admonished her, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Right? And everyone was making fun of Jairus, like she's dead. What's the point? Give up, right? So we get the message of who do we think we are and give up, it's not worth it. Ultimately, you're not worth it. Oh, so now I'm thinking about us, right? I'm thinking about people struggling with depression and so much deep down the burden might be, you're not worth it. You're not worth it. You're not good enough. Nothing you do matters, right? And those lies, right? Psychological terms, they're negative cognitions. I just think they're, they're lies we tell ourselves. Those lies get kind of heavier and heavier until we just, we have, we lack any more motivation because if we're not good enough, if nothing we do matters, why try? Right? And if that part just sort of takes over more and more, we're lost in that. So what do we need? What's the remedy? Well, I, from what I've been getting in terms of the philosophy, I think the word courage comes to mind, right? Because we're afraid, we might even have resentment, we might have sadness that contributes to this malaise or this stuckness, this depression, this achedia, right? And it takes so much effort, it seems, to do something. And I would say what it takes is courage. And I love the word courage because within it, I see the word cœur in French, which means heart. So I'm sure there's a Latin cognate there. Uh, and so to, to have courage is to be enheartened, to have a heart that, that, that is enlivened or encouraged. So what do we need? All right, we need to know the truth, <laughs> right? And so the truth would be that you are good enough and what you do matters. And where do we, where can we hear that and where can we find that? We need to be able to look at the part of ourselves that feels that stuck, right? And if it's, a, it might be a question of maybe the, our core self, our true self is able to see that part, get a little view of it, Maybe we need to bring in um, 
you know, Christ himself, invite Christ into that moment. Maybe bring in, invite Our Lady, bring in our angels, our, our guardian angel, maybe our patron saint, but maybe all of them. Maybe it's a chorus. And we need to be able to, to see that part of ourselves. We're inviting Christ, this chorus of saints and angels perhaps, to be able to look at this part that is feeling stuck and unworthy and hear these words. And I'm going to draw it from the reading again from Wisdom. All right, so this is a great book, the Bible Wisdom. We don't hear it as much, I don't find, because it's in deuterocanonical books, but it's Catholic canon of Scripture. And in the Book of Wisdom, it says, God did not make death. God did not make death. Nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. So there I hear, we're feeling deeply depressed. It's a kind of a death. It's kind of a destruction of life. There's no energy there. There's no, no courage. There's no energy, right? Then it goes on to say, for he fashioned all things that they might have being. And the creatures of the world are wholesome. Mm, that includes you. <laughs> you, are, you are a creature of the world. You are wholesome. And there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. All right. And then this is the most important part. Here it comes. So powerful from the book of wisdom. For God formed man. And man includes women. So if you're a woman listening, it's you too. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature, he made him or her. I'd like you to hear that. If you need to hear it, I'd like it to sink in. God formed you to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made in you. Your worth is intrinsic. It's inherent. You are worthwhile. And we know from our faith that even in the smallest things that we do, we can express that. So if today you're struggling to get out of bed, if today you're just struggling to do some of the things you have to do, you might need to hear those words. You might need to hear the counter to the lies. And that is, you are good enough, and what you do matters. I was always very inspired by, um, um, well, a little bit St. Therese of Lisieux, Brother Lawrence, um, the practice of the presence of God, but also um, uh, Catherine Doherty. I'm not sure if she's a blessed yet or what her status is as a saint, but um, she founded um, uh, Places to Pray. Um, I'm familiar with um, the house that she uh, founded in Cumbermere, Ontario. And part of the charism that Catherine Doherty who I believe was a Russian, uh, she escaped from Russia during the Russian Revolution. But one of her, um, the way that she approached living was that every work that you do, all the work you do, whether it's cleaning a toilet, whether it's changing a diaper, whether it's washing a window, was glorified God and had purpose and meaning. And so there was a prayer in work. I loved that, and I, I use that often uh, at different times, especially when I have to do something that seems tedious, <laughs> right? And, and it's about noticing how God is involved in everything we do, every moment of life. And sometimes we need to be reminded because we get stuck, right? Um, and we might need to hear that over and over again. So if, if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, um, it sometimes takes a lot of time. But I would encourage you to, you know, to identify what is that burden. Because it might be a bit different. Different people are going to have a different burden. It's not always, I'm not good enough. 
or I don't matter. There might be another nuance to it. And then look, if you can, for the scripture, or look, if you can, for the saint and their message and what they say about that, because it needs to be what you hear. The one, of course, I'm most familiar with is is obviously um, God the Father speaking to Christ himself. You are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. What a powerful message of affirmation Christ needed to hear. So we need to hear those affirmations as well. And then uh, just to link it in with the Psalms. Um, in Psalm 30, we hear, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Beautiful words there. Uh, it says a little later, um, At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing beautiful so i will give you thanks right so it's a recognition that mourning and being in despair or feeling trapped or what have you is a normal part of life the psalmist experienced it we repeat these words we all experience it and we all have to allow right allow that to be expressed we're not hiding away our sadness or our anger or resentments our negative feelings that doesn't help we're not repressing those things we're actually going to express them and then in that we allow we allow the lord to work there's a vulnerability in expressing it takes some courage to express how difficult things are and in that we allow the lord to help us we hear those new truths those truths that we were going over a moment ago. And then it allows Christ to have pity. I think by pity there, I don't think it's a looking down in this psalm. I think it's compassion. Allow the Lord to have compassion on us and be our helper so that our mourning can be turned into dancing, as it says in the psalm. All right. And of course, if you're struggling with chronic depression, I really encourage you to see a therapist and on Souls and Hearts, we have a whole course that's free on how to, uh, a Catholic's guide to finding a therapist. So feel free to check out Souls and Hearts in our courses section if you if you need to do that. I hope you'll check out soulsandhearts.com in general. We have tons of stuff on there. I'll be starting the Catholic Journeyman shortly. So July 1st, it'll be launching. If you're interested in that, please reach out. And uh, you can reach out through the soulsandhearts.com site or you can reach out to me directly at uh, jerrycrete at gmail.com jerry is with a g um and uh but on souls and hearts.com if you go to communities and click on catholic journeyman you can put your name and email address in and get on the list uh and we'll send you an invite all right we've got lots of great things going on as we bring the truths of our faith and we bring them together with sound mental health practice for catholics so um i hope you have a great uh, week coming up and uh, as we enter into the summer and uh wish you very well and until next time be still believe be loved take good care <laughs>